Welcome back to Bourbon Barrel Talk. I'm your host, Scott Minton. Today, we are sitting down for our very first episode of the Eight Crazy Nights of Rye. So every holiday season, we like to do some kind of special event or series of a podcast and things of that nature. So this year, we are doing the Eight Crazy Nights of Rye. And uh, today we have a couple of special guests. We have uh, Mr. Travis Hill uh, back again. How you doing, Travis? I am doing well there, Scott. And Appreciate you. And we got you. Brent. Brent, I forgot to catch your your last name. Oh, it's Colangelo. Col- Damn, that's a mouthful. Brent <laughs> Colangelo. So I'm going to have to get you to spell that later so when I print this up. We so. can do that. Today's episode of Bourbon Barrel Talk is sponsored by Matt Wagner with Oxenus Partners Wealth Management. Matt specializes in strategic financial and investment planning. I've personally worked with Matt throughout the years and really appreciate his and his firm's straightforward approach. He and his team personally have helped me and others that I know as well for our investing needs. Oxenus currently has two locations, one in downtown Jeffersonville, the other in Heart of St. Matthews. For a no-obligation consultation, please call Matt at 502-423-1401. That's 502-432-1401. So, fellas, the first one... Or bourbon, I, I, never mind, it's not a bourbon, it's a rye. <laughs> rye, baby. The first mm-hmm. rye we're going to dive into for the Eight Crazy Nights of Rye is one of my personal favorites. It's the Old Forester, and everybody knows that I'm an Old Foe fanboy, and I love this stuff a lot. But uh, I went with the Old Forester Barrel Strength Rye as my favorite from the Old Forester slash mm-hmm. Brown Foreman group. So uh, let's try through this bad boy. Let's see what we like and what we like about it and all that good stuff and give some tasting notes and things to that nature. So it's it's hard not to choose this because it is wonderful and it's new and it's really cool. But I, I do, before we get ahead of ourselves here, want to pause and acknowledge the 100 Proof Rye, which I think is one of the best bottles on the shelf, period. Oh, absolutely. In, in American whiskey and um, make your cocktails with it. Get your friends into rye if they don't like rye. That's a great place to start. A little tamer version, more approachable. Uh, but we're, we're, we're here to talk about this, uh, this big boy here. No, absolutely. You know, I, I started going through each one of the distilleries and I'm like, Hey, what, what, what is my favorite one from each one of these? And then, you know, how did I pick each one and things to that nature? And I kind of went like Brown Foreman as a general type thing. And I could have picked some other things and I could have went with the old Forster 100, right? It's standard. It's a great shelfer. Everybody can find it everywhere. But like every time I dive into these single barrels and I've had about six different ones, I mean, they're just so delicious. They're so unique. They've got so many great notes and it brings out so many of those great things that you love about that hundred proof or only, you know, it's kicking in at like 120 something. You can, you've got a closer edge on the barrel there, but yeah. So this is a warehouse G floor three, uh, 128.2 proof. So 64% alcohol. Right. So it's it definitely doesn't mess around. It's definitely got a little kick to it, but, uh, this is a fresh crack, too. We literally just opened this thing up, so I've been letting it breathe a little bit before we dive in. So I'm going to give you guys an honest uh, statement. I've I've never had the barrel strength rye from Old Forester. So well, this is the first here we for go. me. So we're I'm popping really that cherry today, huh, Ooh, for Brent? Oh, yeah. So, so Brent, I'll, I'll let you and, and Travis dive in, and you can kind of give me some notes, what you think, what's on the nose, all those type of good things, you know, and I'll get a little sniff here, and we'll go from there. The Kind of the first thing that, that you get, like, obviously the proof – and um all that it is it is big it is barrel forward um this had a lot of uh, interaction with the barrel it's um it's not hot but it's definitely high proof it's a little a little dry which i like uh but just very intense flavor um you know you get a bit of like i, I in my head i'm kind of thinking like carrot cake almost like that wow. cinnamony kind of holiday but like that kind of vegetal in a way, but in a good way. Yep. Um, you know, a little chocolate, which I say that all the time, but I get that kind of dry cacao. Yeah. It's definitely dry, a little dry, which yeah. I personally love. I do too. So that, that's, I like one that, I like some of them that bring some fruit forward. I do appreciate that. And this one doesn't really have a whole lot of that. But the dryness that's bringing forward, it's like those nice baking spices. Like you said, that carrot cake, some cinnamon, mm-hmm. a little bit of nutmeg, maybe maybe a touch of coriander or clove. I'm trying to grab that third one out of yeah, there. Yeah, it's but not cinnamon. Yeah. I, I it's got not a little like bit of clove on mine. Just, yeah, just a little clove. bit. Yeah. Like even kind of tobacco-y mm-hmm. too. Yeah, like like almost like a, a tobacco, yeah. Yep. That's definitely got some earthier notes in there and things to that nature. It's like an orange spice almost. I get maybe, orange maybe, too. I was going to say, I was going to get a little citrus yeah, in there, yeah. yeah. This is a tiny splash of it on the edge. Yeah. It's it's this one, and like I said, this is a fresh crack for me, so I'm really trying wow. to decipher exactly. The it's nose is also very complex. It's got mm-hmm. some nice earthy tones. It's sweet. It's um, very. It's not fruit forward, but almost like 
caramel and vanilla, you know, that, like that very strong, sugary, sweet smell. It's a very classic rye on the nose, mm-hmm. but yeah. intense. No, absolutely. And, and, and you, it is 128 proof, but it doesn't drink 128. The, the starting no. drink that you have on this one, I did not get the 128 proof at all. I yep. did not uh, the 128 proof. I didn't get even a little bit. It 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 started off almost as like the old Forester 100 proof, going into it. Right. Yeah. But it's got a great finish too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a fun one. Just want to keep going back to it, which I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, old Forester Brown Foreman synonymous with each other, and I, and I feel like they're kind of the only distillery that hasn't messed it up with pricing. Right. Like. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, I feel like they've gone crazy. They've seen what the secondary market has done. And I kind of like the approach that Old Forester has taken. And that's one of the reasons I really appreciate this Old Forester barrel strength rye is the fact that they reinvented themselves, mm-hmm. right? They, yeah. they could have easily made Old Forester more expensive, started releasing six, eight year old bourbons, things to that nature, 10, 12 year old bourbons, but they didn't do that. What they did was they came out with the Whiskey Row series. So they grabbed the 1910, they grabbed the 1920, you know, 1897, 1870, the Statesman. They, so they reinvented, you know, what they had, even though it's all the same mash bill, the same yeast strand. They've, they've been able to reinvent themselves by blending it in a certain way or a different way. Yep. I, I always like to, um, you know, give them a lot of credit, especially having worked at House of Bourbon here right across the street from the distillery, uh, the, the visitor center here, um, downtown Main Street, Whiskey Row downtown louisville they basically owned covid times and even before and after they're still kind of leading the way uh you know this is the time to acknowledge jackie's i can what she's done uh and she's obviously had support there with you know campbell and the whole team um but to release these products that the fans want you know the whiskey row series um, the one fiftieth president's choice, bringing that back, like mm-hmm. doing barrel strength whiskey. And then everybody's like, you're doing barrel strength bourbon. Why not do a rye? You know? And it took a while, you know, things kind of grind slow, but it's here and they did it because right. we wanted it during the heart of COVID. You're exactly right. Like they took the time, they, they came out with it and, and, and they didn't disappoint. Like, I mean, they could have put some junk out there and made it all small mm-hmm. batch, but they literally did all single barrels. Now, granted, all of them have been released to the distillery, to the best of my knowledge. I don't think anything's been hit the public market. I don't know. That sounds right. So, but that uh, sounds right. But phenomenal picks overall. Everything that I've seen so far, and, and, and Jackie does. She does a fantastic job with how she's picking things. Her methodic, I, methodical is that probably the right way of you know her mm-hmm. going through the barrels, picking the ones that she likes, you know, coming through the specialties. So it's just been a it, it's been a, a real good experience overall this year or the last two years you know with, with what all old foresters yep. done on every level I mean they the way they release stuff down here you know they um, they'll do it online so everybody kind of gets a fair chance they put out birthday bourbon yesterday if you happen to be there yep. I mean it's it's During crazy the middle like of the day. oh you know this was at old forester like they have stuff they're saving it for people that make the trip to come down there. They they have a good shot at least at getting something special. So I mean, I, I just think they're doing everything right. They're they're listening. They're reactive. They're attentive, and the quality of the whiskey is awesome. I mean, I I slept on Old Forester for years, and being right here and and working you know here and tasting all their stuff, I just th- there's nobody really innovating quite like they're doing with new product offerings and listening to the fan base. Being a Lexington transplant for myself, it's it's definitely one of those things for me where I can come in and, and start seeing how much bourbon's impacted Kentucky and, and Louisville itself. Because we've got a few distilleries over in Lexington, but nothing like Louisville has. And Old Forester especially, you know, it's a huge main staple within Louisville itself. And I've, I've grown increasingly on loving it more. Even their barrel strength when that came out almost like two years ago or so. Um, for their single barrels, it's what's phenomenal. It's a huge fan of it, especially at the price point. Right. Yep. So this this particular bourbon that, or rye that we're trying today is sixty five percent rye, twenty 
20% malted barley and 15% corn, which is also just a really unique mash bill when you sit back and mm-hmm. look at rye. Because mm-hmm. when I think of rye, most of them are rye and, and barley. There's not a whole lot of corn even mixed into them for right. the most part. Or it's really l- barely legal with a lot of corn. Yes. Yeah, that's a typical Kentucky rye, 52 to 55 rye and then mostly corn. Right. So, And then you got the old old school MGP, which is the 95.5 rye. But no corn. No corn at all. So it's a... It's really weird how this is such a different blend, different product, and they've been able to bring it to the masses at, at a reasonable price. Not only the 100 proof, but even these barrel strings. I mean, you know, right. when you look at, think, I think most of them are six to eight years old that they've released. Honestly, I think, and I don't have the information, but I think they're younger than that. And are to they? me, that's crazy because it tastes, you would never question the age on it. It's right. phenomenal. No, it's yeah. absolutely, it's delicious product overall. So, all right. So, I'm going to, I'm going to dive into this and be like on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the best one being the worst, you know, of, of the rise that you guys typically drink or pull to is this, you know, and, and, and I'll be honest, probably my, my number, I don't even know what a 10 would be on the rise side for me. Honestly, I'm so, right. I'm so inconsistent at times because there's sometimes I pull some MGP rise and I'm like, Oh my God, that's one of the best things I've ever had in my mouth. But, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, what do you, what, what would you rate this bad boy? Um, that's a tough one. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily want to put it up against all rise from all time. Yeah, no, um, I'm yeah. Not, just as a solid drinker, maybe, maybe the, let's look at it that way. Oh yeah. I mean, you, you'd be foolish not to have this. I mean, it is, it is wonderful and I can't uh, imagine how much better it's going to get as it sits there. And my last sip that I just took, you know, I got a lot more like kind of cherry notes on it. There's kind of a sweetness kind of coming out. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, this 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 rate's very high to me. I don't know what the number is, but right. um, I personally, um, this is not a negative at all. I I love MGP rye, but I'm burnt out on it. So to have wonderful Kentucky rye like this available is amazing. Because for years, Kentucky rye was not really a thing on a big scale. And not at barrel strength, single barrel, stuff like that. So I'm here for it 100%. 100%. All right, Brent. I, I, I won't make you give me a number because we, we don't want to put you all in, in the hot seat too much there. <laughs> 7.3. <laughs> Everybody takes one sip. <laughs> so I, honestly, I mean, if if I'm going to put a number on it, and I'm going to put a number on all these, I, I'm going to throw this one as a solid like 8.5 to a 9. I mean, I, I think I like it's a it. good nice. solid number. I, th- I think it's a great, great pour overall. Um, I'm anxious to see what this thing's going to do against everybody else, you know, because every day is going to be different, right? I mean, it's, and that's the funny thing about when you drink something, right? Like, it, like the other things that are going to come up during this eight days, we're going to have like the M10 rye. We're going to have, you know, some other mm-hmm. things. Oh, wow. Nice. Wilderness Trail. We're going to have all kinds of things that are going to come in here and, and we're going to drink them and we're going to, and we're going to talk about them. But, uh, yeah. to me, this one is just, it, it's near and dear to my heart because I'm a massive OVO fan. On an, an initial sip, I would definitely have this in my, in my open, bottles category for myself at my own house right i i've probably got about four or five ryes at my house i have mostly bourbons mostly because i don't really go towards a rye but i would a hundred percent have this in a lineup with anything else that i would drink so i if you were to put me put on a number on it i'm probably at the eight out of ten for me just gotcha. it, for a rye too right so what about neat versus what do you think this would do better with a little bit of water or how do you think it holds up in, in either scenario i you're would drink re- it neat you're personally. reading my brain because i think that the, what this suffers from is the fact that it is so high proof and that we just opened it i think it has a lot left to give mm-hmm. just like i said the last sip i had was yeah some more fruit, fruit coming out. in yep. so I, I wouldn't hesitate to put a few drops of water in this like not I wouldn't hesitate for a second and yeah. I think it would really open it up and give you a lot more so I think you'll probably taste certain rise over the course of this series that are maybe have a little more on the flavor spectrum but aren't as intense if that makes sense right so I think that that kind of holds this back a little bit I think that there's and this is why I like barrel proof whiskey in general because you're not just buying the taste that you get the moment you open this bottle you're buying it as you drink it down you can Mm -hmm. add water to it put it on the rocks make cocktails with it you get you know many bottles this will take many forms this 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 whiskey in this one bottle 100 percent. that's why i always say that i'm a barrel strength single barrel snob in some capacity because i can do whatever i want with it right if i want it neat and straight i can drink it that way if i want to add a couple of drops of water i put it on a block of ice i can do that if i want to make it into a cocktail it's going to hold up better in all those situations because it started out as barrel strength. So, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, 100%. just like it came out of the barrel right there. 100%. So, well, all right, we're going to wrap this episode up. These are going to be quick hitters. Like I said, there's going to be eight of them over the course of December. If you want to find us, you can find us at Bourbon Barrel Talk. Um, www.bourbonbarreltalk.com. Um, the website is under construction right now. Not a whole lot going on, but we're still working on it. Um, we've got also, um, if you want to find us on email, you can email us at uh, bourbonbarreltalk at gmail.com. Um, we have our Instagram, our Twitter, and our Facebook. That's the easiest way to send us a message through there, and you can kind of contact us and go from there. So, Travis, did you have something else? Yeah, I have uh, some contact information as well, new thing I'm working on. So okay. uh, teachbourbon.com, at teachbourbon on social media. Uh, reach out for tastings, education, um, you know, nice. freelance brand ambassadorship, stuff like that. But uh, teachbourbon.com, it's easy. Reach out. Let's Absolutely. drink some bourbon and, 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 and educate. And I didn't know this was going on, so I'm going to tell you right now, Travis knows his stuff. Like, he is one of the most in- intellectually stimulating dudes in the bourbon industry that I know. Like he knows his stuff. He understands bourbon. He understands rye whiskey. He's got a fantastic collection and he's drank a lot of it. So you should definitely check that out. Teach bourbon.com. Teach bourbon.com. It's easy. It's easy to remember. So you, you hit up my boy, Travis, and, and we'll, we'll be glad to uh, hook you up with him as well. So I appreciate this, that. This is Scott, Travis and Brent signing off. Peace out.